six, the two unders, just that par five closing hole to come. Morikawa for par, no problem at all. So he stays level par. If that actually happens. That's wonderful. Quite wonderful. When you're hitting the fairways and you're firing your second down, shots down the flag, birdies come easily. Pars become... Water lurking. The breeze ever so gently out of the left. That's ideal. Let's find the correct level. The left hand side, a, sh a soft draw required. He can move it both ways. Go hard. Go. Please. Driver for Westwood. Water right. Bunkers left. The sand's in play. Barely a breath out here. He's just driven the ball beautifully all day. It's this new driver, Anthony, he was so excited talking to Tim about it. He's got some extra yardage. Bunker probably wasn't in play with the old driver. Maybe a bit of adrenaline, who knows? Perez from a good angle. And the two players have played out the left hand side of the little stream. With a pin on the right, it's a little cutty shot. And pretty good. Shadows lengthening. Let's have a look at the projected race to Dubai rankings there over on the right hand side and that's if things were to finish as they are on that leaderboard right now so if Perez wins from McIntyre Fitzpatrick and Van Royen he would win not only the DP World Tour Championship in the final Rolex series of end of the year he would win the Harry Varden trophy and become a race to Dubai champ leader Victor Perez final hole for birdie to get to six under Oh, that's a good try. So 67 is superb on this opening day. It's not been easy out there. There is some wind, but otherwise perfect conditions. It's testament to the challenge of this golf course, how it's set up, the pin positions, and he has been the best equipped to deal with it. 67, Victor Perez, currently predicted to go to the top of the rankings. A lot will happen, though, before we find out who that'll be. So this is uphill, sharply. There's a little brow to his left-hand side, which will feed it from left to right, and it might just want to straighten at the hole. He'll fancy this one. It's just a gentle right to left, to ever so gently downhill. That's rolled a little further past than that uh, camera angle shows us. Only his 26 putt today on these big greens. Anything under 30 putts, you've done not bad on the greens. Big putting services. Westwood has found the greenside bunker off the tee at 18. He's going to lay up. Not the most appetising layup either, this. 
good contact and okay. Water left, the rough on the right has been grown in a little bit, so it's, it sort of varies from 30 yards wide to about 16 up near the green. It's not like Quail Hollow, really, is it, where it just goes down, what is it, the left-hand side before sort of starting to meander in towards the green on the end of that closing hole. And so we go back to 17 and a putt for a three for Patrick Reed to stay at one under. He can do that all day long, Patrick Reed. Such a confident putter, full of confidence. Good pace to his putting stroke, key to most good putters. He says he'd like to see more young American players come over and compete on the European Tour. He thinks it'll happen. It was um, perhaps we've seen less this year than we have in previous seasons because of COVID and the uh, the problems with travelling. Fleetwood makes his par as well. So they will head to the 18th tee. Two and a one under wrist bother him. In out the left. Might trickle back a little bit from there. Go on, keep coming down the slope. Nicely played. Playing with a big smile today, Westwood. 124. He hadn't played the back nine, so he didn't have a clue what to do at 17, but he, he certainly picked the right layup. The right hand side is predominantly the best layup up here at 18. Got to pitch this one at least pin high, if not a fraction pass. It will definitely make its way back. 124, probably playing 128. Freshening breeze. Beautiful light uh, at this time of day. And there's nothing much wrong with the approach of Westwood either. Classy stuff from he and Morikawa. Yeah, back on the team. Fleetwood quickly down for his tee. Do you remember when Danny Willett very nearly did he drive it into the brook there? Or was it just it was just on the edge, wasn't it? I think when he won the title, the seventy second hole. 304 to the bunkers up the left hand side. There are two of them. That was Tommy's best. Creek running through the middle. Truly is a, an amazing signature hole. Into the draft today. Two whoppers to reach. And some ways playing off his back tee here. This hole is certainly the tee shot a little easier. It's a bit wider where the ball's landing there. And you, if you pull it left, you might just reach the bunker. So two perfect tee shots. We had a French winner last week over on the fire course at Jumeirah Golf Estates, and we have a Frenchman leading the way here on the earth course. Victor Perez, round in 67, leading from Scotland's McIntyre, England's Fitzpatrick, and Eric Van Royen, day one of the DP World Tour Championship. Tournament that he has won, the inaugural edition, 2009, and this to shoot 69. Oh, not quite to be. In the end, it was a good bogey on 17. After misjudging that second up the bank. And it's going to be a par on the last, which we know today isn't a bad score. Five's not normally what you're looking for as a tall pro on a par five, but 18 was playing particularly tough today. A round of 70, Lee Westwood absolutely in it. And Colin Morikawa, you can say the same for him for a closing birdie. Not quite to be. And in the end, he's going to have to settle for a level par round. It doesn't sound spectacular, but again, no damage done. Plenty of time to make up the distance. Patrick Reed's laid up in the final group. Tommy Fleetwood, second shot here on 18.
He is, you know. Or is he? Right or left? As long as he's not centre, he's all right. Perfect layout on the fairway, good angle. But the narrower you hit it up there, then the, the narrower the fairway gets. cheer about there from his end it must have looked like it was going to go in the hole right down the banner never left the flag you come in here leading you're the only player not to drop a shot throughout the course of the first 18 he, he's made a statement today even though he's doing the chasing yeah. 109 Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking fractions here. Yeah. Just be precise. It's a different it's story with the spin, but he's very good at dead arming shots with that three-quarter backswing and the three-quarter follow-through. He can take the spin out of it. Started round one with a whole putt from around 25 feet, and putting has been a big feature today. But what a lovely way to finish the coverage as well. They're two magnificent approach shots, and surely they'll yield birdie falls. The first of them coming from Reed, the second from uh, Tommy Fleetwood. This 18th over the years, Dom, has given us some real drama, hasn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, a classic finishing hole, really, isn't it, now in terms of the European Tour and, of course, the focus of the end of season as well. It ain't over until you've got this one in the bag, is it? And I think this is today the flag, uh, so the tee was back. And the next three days, the tee is going to be forward, which means unless the wind's really strong, you can reach it in two, which really adds to the drama. The way John Rahm played that bunker shot last year, he, well, it was just like it, you know, it was wasn't to win the title effectively. And he put it in close, hold the part as well. I think the good thing about moving the tee forward is it brings the water into play as well off the tee. They couldn't reach that today, so this stream that runs all the way down like a serpentine shape back towards the tee wasn't in play with the driver. And I think when you've got a, a three wood in your hands or a long iron there and you've got a difficult pin position over on the left and these are questions that these players are going to have to face over the three days and that adds to the drama because some players like to take it on and risk a reward do or die who's first wayne Uncle Wayne's gone. First goes Tommy Fleetwood. We've seen a lot of birdie opportunities inside 15 feet, and some have been canned, but not that many. It's all westwards from this angle. It drifts from right to left. Been a great day on the greens for Tommy Fleetwood. Some of the best holding out I've seen from him for a long while. Missed nothing, but well, missed one putt inside a four feet. The rest is trickled in from different ranges. Round is 69, 34, 35, and there's only four players ahead of him. Excellent stuff. He's got a bit of support out there, hasn't he, Tommy? Patrick Reed won't mind that at all. Might see a little bit of shushing later in the week. <laughs> he relishes the battle, doesn't he? And of course, they met in the Ryder Cup uh, in France over the course of four sims uh, and four balls. So, to finish off the opening round. Beautiful. All made possible by the sheer quality of the third shot. 
And there's nothing much between them. Reed out in front coming here this week. Fleetwood tucked in behind him. And Fleetwood has an advantage of one over Patrick going into day two. Some tournaments take a while to get going. This one never does. And the cream comes to the top fairly quickly here on the earth course. An exciting youngster from Scotland, Robert McIntyre. Stenson, a double DP World Tour Championship winner. And Lee Westwood hunting a 